Hi, this is Carrie Shelf from On Point Quilter. Last week, I showed you how to put a background quilting design on our string pleased applique. Now, I've been sitting and struggling a little bit about how to best applique the uh, circles, which are all string pieced, on my background. And I finally decided that it would make sense to create just another circle that goes on top of this so that I can just uh, potentially fuse that and then uh, use either a zigzag or a buttonhole stitch to finish it. So let me share how I'm going to create that circle within Electric Quilt. So for those that have been following along, here is where we ended last week with our design. And as I mentioned, um, I was really struggling with actually appliquing these on the background surface. So I thought if I could create something to go over that so I wouldn't have all those exposed seams, it would be a little bit easier. So I decided to go ahead and put just a one inch sort of circle around each of the shapes. But I wanted to share with you how to do that because uh, creating holes in applique uh, can present a bit of a challenge. So I'm going to first of all uh, view my sketchbook and I'm going to find one of my applique uh, circle blocks. And I'm going to go to my motifs tab. and I'm going to take this block and I'm going to go ahead and edit it. And notice that this one came in at 12 inches which is the size that I want to use. And since I'm going to actually create something on top of that, the first thing I'm going to do is use my pick tool and I'm going to do a control A which would select all, right click and I'm going to convert it to guides. So I can see my shape, but um, probably more importantly, I can draw my circle then that will fit around that. And I want it to be a one inch circle. So I'm going to select my oval, and so I'm going to go to my common shapes under the ovals, uh, click on the uh, flyout, and select the oval, and I'm going to start at the center of the top, and I'm going to drag it to the bottom. Now you'll notice that it actually is a little bit wider than it is tall so I need to fix that. So I'm going to use the pick tool I'm going to select the item and it says it's 12 by 12 but I don't actually think that it is so I'm going to uh, bring that down and then bring it back up and I'm going to do the same on that. So I just basically changed both circles so they were exactly 12 by 12 and I'm going to center that. And now notice that it is perfectly centered. And now I want another circle that is just one inch smaller. And so I can do that over again but I'm just going to take this one and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clone it. So I'm going to do a clone and I'm going to change this to 11 by 11. So if I type in 11, 11, and um, I'm going to now select that, and I'm going to go ahead and center that. And so that's just going to give me a very narrow band. Now the issue is, because these are filled shapes, when I color them, I'm not going to have the hole to see my applique. So I'm going to go back to the applique tab and I'm going to create that hole. So I'm going to first of all select the pick tool and I want to change a couple of snapping options. Um, so right now I think I just want to snap to my grid point. Um, I can snap to nodes and I snap aligned segments and auto join segments when drawing. So I like all of those and I'm going to go ahead and keep those. Now I'm going to just zoom in on that top corner because when I use my shape tool and I click on my shape, and I'm, it's not letting me do that. Okay now let me zoom in. 
can you see that when I did that, I have an edit object um, toolbar. And I'm going to select that middle node, that node right there. And I had to play with it a bit, but I was trying to get to the point where it said to break the curve because I want to separate it there. And so I've done that. And I'm going to select the other one and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to basically break the curve and I'm just going to move, oops, because it's snapping them back in place. So what I want to do is I'm going to go back to my pick tool and I'm going to turn off for a minute the snap to grid point. And that should allow me with the shape tool to move this out of the way, right? Uh, because I'm going to connect up the two circles at both the start and the stop points and then I'm going to put them back together. So I'm going to take the line tool and because I'm auto joining I'm going to just um, click and notice that when I did that if I use the shape tool it um, it, no, it connected and it's showing that we've got both of the segments here. So I'm going to take the line tool and I'm going to do the same thing on that. And now what I want to do is go back to um, the pick tool and I am going to change my snapping options to snap to grid point. Um, and so this is going to now allow me to use my shape tool and to snap in place. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here. And I can still tell that there's a little bit of a hole there so it's um, not quite snapping where I want them to here. Oops, control Z because I don't know what happened. And then I'm going to just scroll down here and I'm trying to just put those at that six point and right on top of each other. Okay, so I can zoom out and I'm actually going to do a fit to work table and now when I color notice that the background um, does not show up. So I'm going to add this to my sketchbook and now if I go back to my work on quilt I can set block and I can select my motif that I just did and I know this one here is a 12 inch block so I'm actually I'm going to go to layer 2 I'm going to move that on here and I'm going to use the uh, resize and I'm going to change that to 12 by 12 and I can now center that over my circle because I'm going to go to that first circle or I'm going to go to this circle and I'm actually going to change it to 12 and a half. And so I'm going to put basically a half an inch outside the circle and a half inch in. And I'm going to move this still. And so it's going to probably better represent what I'm actually going to do with that. Now I could resize this right and put it on my other circles however then it wouldn't be a perfect one inch. So what I ended up doing was creating a six inch circle and an eight inch circle that I could just use for the smaller shapes. Now one way that I can make sure that I'm bringing in the correct size blocks is I'm going to go to the More Quilt Work Table Options and under Setting Blocks I'm going to say Use the Size Actually Recorded in the Block and I'm going to click on OK. 
So now when I select the set uh, block tool and I pull in my blocks, I know that they're coming in at the size that I designed them as. And so you can see where this one is six inches and I can use my ruler tool to just validate that. And this one here looks like it's my eight inch one. So I'm going to zoom out and for my six inch, um, I am going to go ahead and just bring that to six and a half and drag that in place and I'm going to bring that to eight and a half and drag it in place as well. And so um, it really creates an easy way for me to fuse, uh, fuse the items. Now what I did decide is I do want to actually print these at uh, the little bit larger increment so that when I sew this I don't have to, um, I, I want to sort of overlap my circles, right? So that it's going to be easy to sew. And so I'm going to go ahead and finish that and recolor it. And here is my final quilt. And so on my blog post this week, I just will share with you what my quilt actually looks like with those circles on it. Thanks so much for watching. For additional tips and techniques, please subscribe to my weekly newsletter at www.onpointquilter.com. And next week, I promise, will be the last uh, uh, tutorial in the series. And for this one, I'm going to go to Art & Stitch to design um, a, another design that I could use for quilting on top of the circles.